prayer your anointing be strong upon Oscar this morning. You would bring the word that you want us to hear, the word that you want us to learn from, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He's saying, measure the temple. Then he says, within the temple, there's an altar. Measure the altar. And within that altar, in front of that altar, there are all these people worshiping. Measure them too. The temple, the altar, the worshipers. The temple being the place of visitation, but up in the heavens is in the habitation of God. The altar, the very place that you use to worship and communicate with God. But the worshipers were something different. They were in different stages of worship, asking God and this angel uh, that had given them, given Ezekiel the read to see, measure them. Then at the end, he says, do not measure what's outside. The court was a holy place also. The court was a place where there was the sacrifices and everything. And yet God was saying it had been given to the Gentiles. Not a gift like I give it to you, but he said, we're not going to fight over it. Don't measure it. Running toward the end times at whatever it is that your spiritual clock is. You're going to find increasingly... Verses that do not make a lot of sense to the economy that we live in today. To him who has given more. And to him who has little, even the little that he has taken away. That doesn't seem very equitable. Communists will fall in pieces reading that verse. Because it doesn't really make sense. And yet when you come to the end, you're going to find out that it makes all the sense of the world. One of the teachings there is this. You can't, you got to stop being one who is just outside. You got to stop being one who's just uh, somebody who's watching. You got to stop being somebody who just likes living with just the bare minimum spiritually. One that is barely making it. The end times are not going to be for people who barely make it. You better be full of God. Yeah. This is where God gives five talents, three talents, one talent. Remember that? And the guy with the one talent freaks out and he says, I'm going to lose it. So he went and buried it. You remember that? And the Lord comes back and he gives you this lesson again. He says, take the one and give it to the guy who had five. And you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. Well, God is not trying to talk about economics right there. However, some preacher may try to tell you. God is talking about how it is that you approach life in the kingdom. Yeah. Woe to him who has learned how to live in survival mode. The Bible does not say thou shalt survive. He says you will be more than conquerors. Amen. That he will give you life and life in abundance. It means that we need to find a place of abundance spiritually. That we need to find a place where we're not just breeding. I'm going to tell you a little cruel thing. I found, you know, I put a, a thing of water somewhere, you know, because there was some drip. And somehow a mouse had found itself in it. Don't ask me how he got in, but he couldn't get himself out. I saw him, he was there. His nose was above the water. But he couldn't extricate himself. And I thought, well, I need to either kill it or, or you know, do something with it, you know. But in going and I'm going to get to, to go to church, I forgot about it and I left. Not good for the mouse. Came back after church and he was still hanging on. I said, this guy's got it going on. Nose was up. How long? He had to be cramping already. How long has he been there? Well, there is something good to survival mode. But in the end times, that's not what God wants. Yeah. God is looking at this and he says, 
There are some that have chosen to be outside in the court. They are used to looking into the Holy of Holies and looking into the righteous place and looking into the menorah and talking about the greatness and seeing people going in and out of the presence of God and they are satisfied with being in the courts. Yeah. God says don't measure them. They don't make the cut. And you go into why is he saying this? Why is he just measuring the worshipers at the altar? God is calling out a, a nation and a remnant that desires him more than he desires anything else. God is saying be full of the glory of God. God is saying display all the talents that God has given you. Some of you guys have some hidden talents that only you know. And yet God gave them to you. Use them at this season and in this time. Yes, amen. Some people have abilities that they, they refuse to use. And God says it is time to deploy all the arsenal. Yeah. It is time to get so near unto God that his fire is ever burning in you. Amen. That that altar will be so close to you. That you will receive the presence of God. There is an altar outside, yes. But the altar that I'm talking about is the altar of incense. Incense is the prayer of the saints that go up to the Lord. That's where you need to be. We yeah. need to be people of prayer and worshiping yeah. God all the time. Amen. Right in that place where God is talking about is also the menorah, the permanent light that is always putting light. Let the glory of God ever be so near that you can sense his presence constantly. Right there, there was also the manna. We need to have a belly full of his manna in such a way that we are not always just looking for a drip, drip, but for a flood of the presence of yeah. God Amen. and his word. It is not enough to be anointed every 10 times. You need to be anointed every time you open your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. It is not enough for this world to look at us doing one good deed in the presence of people. It is permanent. We have to be in a different mode right now. We have to be better than we are at any point. And I'm not talking about the works of men. I'm talking about allowing God to take over your life in such a way that you count amongst the worshipers who are right there at the altar. Amen. Let me tell you how, how this happens on the negative. Have you ever seen, maybe you've been there, where, where God is reaching to your heart and I literally have seen people holding to the back of a pew because they don't want to answer God. I've seen tears crying. You know, going down their faces, but they don't want to answer because they know the commitment that required. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you ask him, they say, I know he's drawing me. I know he's calling me. Have you been feeling he's drawing? I have. I feel it at night. I feel it in the morning. I know he's drawing us. I know he's drawing us closer and closer and closer and closer. There's too many satisfied with being at the courts. The Bible says, I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. The courts are only a door. They are not the place for you to dwell in. They are the place you walk into the presence of God with. There are way too many who are hanging out at the door and who refuse to be counted among the worshipers. I ask God this. If we were all right there right now, will he measure you with he measure me? Will he find me kneeling at the altar? Or will I be out there among the Gentiles? I'm a Gentile. So he wasn't talking about Jew and non-Jew. He was talking about worshipers and non-worshipers. About people who live close and people who live far. I pray that as we rush more, toward where life has to meet God, that there is a death to your relationship like there has never been before. And that when the measuring read is in his hand, that he finds you, not worshiping at the altar of life or at the altar of your own worries or at the altar of your dreams and your desires or at the altar of your wants, 
Way too many of Christianity is worried about what car they drive. Way too many of Christendom is concerned more about the level at which their career is. I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. But they're not the essence of life. Christ is. Yes. Yeah. Christ is. And he needs to stir us up more than before. Yes, amen. That he can measure and say, this one is mine because yes. he's right here at my feet, at my altar. God bless you. Amen. amen.